last time we spoke, you went recently open source. Uh, that was a pretty recent thing and you reached out, you emailed us and you said that was like a big recent announcement for you guys. Uh, it's been a couple years now. What's that journey been like? Uh, some projects go open source and I think no one regrets ever going open source, but there's new challenges when you go open source. You know, you, you expose yourself to the community uh, and sometimes the community, even if it's very good, positive criticism, you still have to now keep up with community's demands a little bit better sometimes. So I guess, where are the benefits of going open source, which I'm sure there are many, but are there any kind of uh, negative sides of that as well that you can share? Because um, I'm sure there might be two sides of the coin here, but I'm sure no, no one ever regrets going open source, I'm sure. But um, I guess I'm just curious, what are kind of the behind the scenes updates on that two years later? Even before we went open source, it was internally we were discussing a lot about you know the pros and cons. So the biggest fear that's still you know on our heads is that someone would copy everything and they would you know start their own website, and it would be a competing product, and we would have to be like it would be like a headache, and that's still that's still a possibility. And fortunately, no one has done that. So that was like the biggest problem, but unfortunately, no one has done it. And so far, it, you know, going open source was one of our best decisions because whenever you make something that's privacy focused, the one thing that you need to earn that you can't build, that you can't force is trust. And there's no better way to earn people's trust uh, except going open source. And uh, an audit, yeah, an audit, yeah. That's that's something that that's also been on our plans to do a third party audit, but that's still ongoing. I actually, while you were talking, because I didn't include this in any of my notes or any of my outlines or anything, um, regarding trust, I feel like there's a few things that especially are recent and very real to people right now. Open source is always one of them that's consistent. Uh, and then the next one, I think you said audits. And the third one is sustainability and like, you know, in the face of VC funding or anything like that, will that influence the company? And I know it's a bit of a touchy subject, especially because I, I guess it might be a competitor. Skiff? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of people listening are like, okay, Skiff, collaborative notes. They got bought by notes or they got bought by um, Notion. Notion. Notion, thank you. And then, so I guess when it comes to you all there at Notes Nook, um, because I, I chatted with the pu publicly, like on our forum, I chatted with the Skiff CEO and you know they always said they were audited, but they never published their audits. And anytime I asked, where are the audits? They would say, well, we did them. We'll publish them someday. We never saw those audits. So A, like, can we expect public audits if you do them and B, I guess, how do you reassure the community that you won't just get acquired and disappear um, in six months? Because I know, and I know you've been here for two years now, you're a lot more established than they ever were. It's not a fair apples to apples comparison, but I know I've been seeing a lot more questions recently. And I do think sadly that service like Skiff has eroded the trust in other privacy services because of what they did, which I think is really unfair to other services. But I guess, that, what do you have to say, I guess, to try to reassure trust for users if they have any concerns? Yeah, okay, so the difference is that we want to be transparent. Uh, we don't want to hide things from the community. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to say, okay, this, this part of the code or this thing will not be shared with the community. So, for example, if we do audits, an audit will only make sense if it's uh, if its report is public and if it's regular. So because the code is always changing, you can't really audit it, uh, your code once and be like, okay, I've done the audit and uh, that's it. You have to continuously do it and people should be able to use audited versions uh, aside from you know the latest version. So the audit version would be separate so you can stay on the audited version and be uh, be sure that this doesn't have any security vulnerabilities and it's, it's secure and private. Uh, and then there would be the latest version which has the latest integrated features until until the new audit is done and you can uh, move to the next version. Uh, so if we do it, we will do it this way. 
Uh, what Skiff did that I think uh, they could have done a little bit better would be more transparent. Like, for example, when they when they got acquired, they didn't, they weren't really uh, open about it. Like, they should have said it out front. Like, we got acquired, and yeah. But it was able. It, it looked like it looked like Skiff was uh, not getting acquired, uh, not getting acquired and shut down. It was like they're just joining forces with Notion and Skiff with Uh So, uh, and we don't. We're not VC funded, so there's no danger of that getting acquired or anything. We want to do our own thing, and Notion is our primary uh, primary project. So if we leave this, we will have nothing else. So there's no danger of that. And even if we do get acquired, I want this, like the audience who is watching this, even if we do get acquired, Nostra will remain open source. You can fork our repositories, including our server, and run it on your own infrastructure. Hopefully, soon we will give instructions and everything. But you can still do it right now. And Nostra is not going away in any way, in any way or form. So... Even if we go away, Notsuit is still here. Yeah, that's our guarantee. Super cool. And yeah, I think going back to what you said earlier, you know, especially if you introduce um, the ability to sell post, I think that really resolves a lot of concerns. And I think what people don't remember, uh, Skiff, this is something else I brought up, Skiff was not very open source. Uh, Skiff advertised itself as being open source in kind of a sly way because Skiff mail was open source. Just mail, drive, docs, I don't think calendar, none of their, nothing else in their suite was open source except Skiff Mail. Um, but it kind of advertised itself as being an open source suite. It was a little bit misleading in my eyes because I thought it was open source for a long time based on the advertising. Um, I don't think I was the only one. And, you know, if the server is also closed source, you couldn't do anything. But not even the, co the code was open source for docs, so it just made it really hard to verify anything and be able to even perhaps, like, build a way to view the documents um, for people who needed to leave the service and et cetera. So I think it'd be really cool and it would really reassure users, you know, if you not only are open source, but you're able to self-host it. Um, if something crazy happens, like the whole service gets taken over and they blow it up, it's fine because the code from last week still exists. Um, not blow up in the literal way, just like the code is like, screw this, they just destroy the repos. It's fine because the code was there a week ago. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that. And yeah, I'm so, sure the community appreciates hearing that. Yeah, what you mentioned, I, I think Skiff was, uh, they had their clients for all their apps. I think, you know, Recently, when I was uh, adding this support for Skiff in the uh, in our importer from Skiff pages, I was adding support for it. I, I looked through the repository, and uh, I think their clients were open source in some way or form. But the problem with something like Skiff is that uh, even if your clients are open source, no one can do anything with it because uh, first of all, they don't run without an account. So even if you were able to like run it on a local host on your own computer, uh, it will you will only see the login screen. Uh, and for even if you bypass that, you won't be able to do, it's like really coupled with the online experience. And the difference with Notesnook in that scenario is that you can run Notesnook without an internet, without an account. You can make notes, you can do everything. And uh, if you're running it on your own computer, you can disable the limits on the pro features. So you won't even need to have an account. So. It will still work. Even if you don't run a server, you can still run Notesnook on its own. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this TechLore clip. This is actually a highlight from our main channel, TechLore, where we talk about digital rights, privacy, security, and how you can have a better relationship with technology. So if you want the full length experience, definitely check out our main channel, TechLore. We'll leave a link somewhere on the screen, wherever our editor puts it, and you can probably check it down in the description as well.